If you decide to cut or modify your own valve reliefs, it must be done with caution. Piston crown thickness should be checked prior to modification, especially for anything beyond a minor tweak, to ensure that you won't be cutting all the way through the piston crown or leaving it very thin. There are special tools or rigs for measuring piston crown thickness, but it can be done with pretty basic tools. Measure from the bottom of the skirt to the top of the piston. Then place a flat bar across the piston skirts in the area that you just measured and measure the depth to the bottom of the crown. You will need to either zero your measuring tool to negate the thickness of the bar or subtract the bar thickness from the depth measurement. Then you can subtract the depth from the height to get an idea of crown thickness. If you will be cutting into an existing relief or if the piston has features like a dome or a dish, you will need to measure those as well and take them into account. There are a couple of common ways to cut your own valve reliefs without expensive tools. You could try freehand cutting with a rotary tool using burrs or stones. You must be very careful to cut in the right position and at the right angle if using this method. I would suggest keeping a clay impression from a clearance check handy to reference and making frequent checks rather than trying to cut it all at once. You could mark the piston for the valve center using a punch or marking tool that fits with little play through the valve guide while the piston is at the point of minimum clearance, and then use a compass to mark the valve's diameter plus 100 thousandths of an inch to give you 50 thousandths of an inch radial clearance all around. The tools shown aren't exactly what you should use for this, but they're what I had handy for quick illustration purposes. Another option is to create your own piston notching tool from a spare valve. This allows you to more easily keep the size and angle of the cut correct. In my example, I needed clearance on the exhaust valve side only. I could have made the cut with a replacement exhaust valve and then used a rotary tool to add the radial clearance, but I chose to start with a larger valve instead. I bought an intake valve because it's larger, and then cut it down to the size I wanted, which was the exhaust valve diameter plus 100 thousandths of an inch to give me 50 thousandths of an inch radial clearance all in one cut. I did the cutting with the valve chucked in a drill and then held against the grinding stone. Then I used a cutoff wheel to turn the head of the valve into a cutting tool. Leaving boxy or dull raised sections makes for slow material removal, but may leave a finer finish. You can make the cutter more aggressive by forming sharp, angled teeth. The valve slash cutting tool can then be placed into the head as you would insert a normal valve with a little bit of oil on the stem for lubrication. Then you'll need to find a way to spin the valve. You will probably find that standard drills won't reach the valve well enough to chuck it up securely because of the cylinder head's design on these small engines. I used a drill bit extension that I had around that secured the valve in it with a set screw. You can find these at most hardware stores. Rotate the engine so that the piston is at the point of minimum clearance. You can find this by checking with a dial indicator, or some people just set the piston to top dead center. Then you will need to tape off the entire bore and the edges around the piston so that debris from cutting can't get into the engine. Don't tape the area where you'll be cutting. Now the cylinder head can be installed. I just used a bunch of washers in place of the rocker assembly for spacing so that the cylinder nuts could be tightened. Then the drill can be attached to the cutter. Some people set up a stop of some sort to give them an easy way of stopping before they cut too deep. I worked without one in this instance. You can begin spinning the cutter while applying a bit of pressure to push the valve toward the piston to start notching the piston. Be very careful not to spin the tool while it's pulled back against the valve seat. You don't want to take a chance of cutting or scoring the valve seat with a valve that doesn't match it properly or with the debris inside of the engine from cutting. Make frequent checks to see how your cutting is coming along and to avoid removing more material than you intend to. Aggressive cutters can take away a lot of material in just seconds. You can try to measure the depth of the reliefs with calipers or other measuring tools, but I chose to check actual piston to valve clearance to know exactly how much more cutting was needed. After you reach the desired clearance, you should clean up any sharp edges. It can be done with the piston still in the engine and taped if you'd prefer, but make sure all passages are blocked off. 
That should complete your piston notching. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please like it, favorite, and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.